Downtown Louisville getting a massive boost in state funding. Mayor Craig Greenberg's office securing a total of $100 million from Kentucky lawmakers. The money will go toward downtown revitalization efforts, specifically a list of the mayor's highest priority projects. Kentucky lawmakers passed two state budget bills last week. Together, they will provide more than $600 million for Louisville. More than $400 million of that will go toward existing projects at UofL. Nearly $60 million will fund community and social services in the city. More than $25 million will be set aside for organizations like the Kentucky Center for the Performing Arts. And tonight's senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez and photojournalist Jessica Farley focus on what this means for downtown. Many of the mayor's major projects for downtown Louisville are contingent on state funding. And now, barring any last minute changes, it looks like he'll be getting that. The Belvedere, once known for frequent festivals and crowd favorites, the community care campus to provide the houseless population a place to stay and recover vacant lots across the heart of the city, badly in need of development. These are all part of Mayor Craig Greenberg's wish list last October, calling for state lawmakers to set aside money to get the projects off the ground. We can and must build an entirely new residential neighborhood here in downtown Louisville. Now it's April and it appears Greenberg's relationship with Republicans in control of the state's purse strings has paid off. Special thanks to the House and Senate leadership, to President Stivers, Senator Rocky Adams. $100 million over the course of two years to re-energize downtown will soon be on the way. We need those places that are dead and not used right now to get back on the tax rolls and get more um, activity and development in them. Louisville Downtown Partnerships Rebecca Flyshaker is hopeful for what's ahead. Now the question becomes how exactly the money is divided and when the community starts feeling the benefits. Isaiah Kim Martinez, WHAS 11, on your side. State budget bills will still need final approval from Governor Andy Bashir. He can veto individual parts he doesn't agree with, but ultimately Republican leadership can override any of his vetoes. The governor has yet to make a public which items of that budget bill that he will veto if he chooses to veto any. Also new today, big business story. It's a, fact, a contract expansion for one of Louisville's biggest employers. UPS is now going to be the primary cargo provider for USPS. That's right, the Postal Service. It means packages in U.S. mail will be sorted at the Whirlport facility in Louisville. The new air cargo contract significantly expands an existing partnership between the two businesses. The Postal Service had a uh, contract with FedEx, but this now moves UPS into the deal immediately, according to UPS. The Postal Service said the move to switch carriers to UPS should help improve efficiency of mail transportation, as well as reduce overall transportation costs, specifically air freight costs. A reminder today from LMPD, when buying or selling items to strangers, choose your locations carefully. Over the weekend, a woman was shot after meeting up with a man to make a sale. The pretended buyer tried to rob her, police said, and then uh, allegedly tried to shoot her while she got away. Jose Alonzo is talking with police about safe locations they've established in hopes of preventing future crimes just like this one. When driving around Louisville Metro Police Stations, you may notice these designated parking spots. There are four metro swap zones within the city, including this one at LMPD's 7th Division and the 3rd Division. So if you need to buy or sell anything, the department suggests that you come during the daytime and not at night and that you make sure that somebody else knows you're going to be in this area making a transaction. The attempted robbery in the Chickasaw neighborhood has LMPD ringing the bell on public safety. They fled, and in the course of that flight, uh, allegedly the, the person who they had met uh, fired a shot and, and hit one of the ladies in the arm uh, as they were driving away. Of course, Public they, Information uh, Officer John Bradley says they've established safe locations when online bartering became popular. But essentially it's providing a safer environment for people who are engaging in this online commerce to meet and where they can feel pretty secure that they are not driving up to meet someone who has ill intent. Not every division has a metro swap location, but Bradley encourages people to meet at any police station. There are typically cops coming and going at all hours of the day and night. Um, there's generally speaking somebody around uh, and that that kind of helps dissuade people from perhaps committing these acts if they know they're standing there in front of the police station. 
Metro swap zones can also be found at LMPD's 2nd and 8th divisions, all under 24-hour surveillance. Officer Bradley says if you do happen to be harmed or robbed when trying to make an exchange, to immediately report it. In Louisville, Jose Alonso, WHAS 11, on your side. The non-fatal shooting squad is still actively looking into this assault. LMPD is still working on getting an image of the suspect. If you have any information from last night's attempted robbery, you can report it to the tip line at 574-LMPD. Now to new developments in Saturday's mass shooting in Indianapolis. Seven young people shot between the ages of 12 and 17. Police are now calling for community support to break the cycle of violence. Indianapolis police say around 1130 on Saturday night, officers patrolling downtown responded to calls of shots fired. When they got there, they found six victims with gunshot wounds. Paramedics took them all to the hospital. Police say a seventh victim later arrived at the hospital with a gunshot wound. It starts at home. That's the first place uh, you can look to the police all you want to try to solve these things. And like the, the chief said, we have plenty of resources in downtown Indianapolis on the weekends to deal with our issues. And yet this just this occurred. Police say they believe more than one firearm was involved in that shooting. The woman accused of murdering her five-year-old son and dumping his body into a suitcase in Indiana has now officially been booked into the Washington County, Indiana jail. DeJuan Anderson is being charged with murder, neglect of a dependent, and obstruction in connection with the death of Cairo Jordan. Anderson was arrested in Los Angeles earlier this month after a nearly two-year-long search. She was extradited back to Indiana, and court documents show she was booked in the Washington County jail over the weekend. It's an arrest the small community has been waiting for. Many in Salem, Indiana still bring flowers and toys to Cairo's grave, including the mushroom hunter who found his body two years ago. We're expecting more information in her arraignment coming up tomorrow at 1.30. And the other woman in this case, Dawn Coleman, already pleaded guilty in connection to Cairo's death. According to court documents, Anderson asked Coleman to help put Cairo's body in a trash bag and then into the suitcase. Coleman was sentenced to 25 years in prison and five years of probation last November. As part of her plea agreement, she will need to testify against Anderson in any criminal case related to Cairo's death.